After a long, hard day in Singapore, people look forward to Pasar Malam. That's the night market where you go to enjoy delicious hawker food. I'm Thomas Robson. Welcome to Entree to Asia. Once upon a time in Singapore, not so long ago, there would come a time each day when people would rush to move their automobiles out of parking lots and hurry to get their cars out of certain back streets because the hawker carts were coming. As the sun set on the city, it was time for the night market to begin. Pasar Malam, or night market, was an exciting place for people to go. Soon they would be meeting with family and old friends, laughing, shopping, and inevitably eating until it was time to go home, usually well after midnight. Night markets are not as common as they used to be and hawker streets are hard to find, but the Singaporean passion for hawker fare is not diminished. Nowadays, people meet at a hawker center, a covered but otherwise open-air setting where hawkers set up and compete for your attention, each of them serving up local snacks and specialties. Make no mistake, the competition for taste buds is vocal and more than a little frenetic. But hawkers are specialists, perfecting the preparation of the food they serve in hopes that one day, that food will make them rich. The hawker stalls and food carts aren't the only place to find great food in Southeast Asia. Chef Peter Tsang of the Shang Palace restaurant brings new meaning to the term creative especially when it comes to seafood and vegetables. If you've ever tied a bow around a birthday present, this recipe should be a snap. What he's going to use is chicken powder, half a teaspoon. So that's the basically the sauce base ready yes. to go. Yeah. So just a little bit of that and that'll give a nice uh, color and appearance, right? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, you only pour in the ingredients when the oil is fully hot. Right. Okay, what he's doing now is to work up those uh, flour. Right. So whatever breaks loose and floats free, he wants yeah. to strain out. Yes. Now he's preparing a sauce. Right. First, you'll put in some butter. What's amazing is just the amount of heat left in the wok takes care of melting and getting the flavors out of the ginger and the garlic. After you have put every every ingredients in, you start to put in the sauce. Okay. Onions on to it to garnish it. So here we are at the coffee garden where they've got a recreation of almost an authentic Pasar Malam, that means night bazaar. 
and a typical night bazaar dish is the pepper crab. Note how we're going to start off with some butter. That's quite unique to Singapore, one of the few Asian countries where you'll see dishes regularly prepared with butter. Peter Lim, chef, yes. what can you tell us about this dish? This is, is a local favorite dish. Mm -hmm. Call it black pepper crab. Yes. It's a, we'll, we'll show you how we do it now. First, we put butter and the black pepper. Some of, mix with some of the sauce inside. So now this is a special black pepper special sauce we're starting sauce with. Have, yeah. Okay. So these are the, the crabs that we're going to fry. In. Okay, now some crabs. Traditionally, often people will start with raw crab, and then the dish takes quite a bit longer to prepare. So you'll see in the night bazaars, and especially in the restaurants, crab will be deep fried slightly beforehand. This speeds up the preparation and adds a special touch to the dish as well. Quite a bit of heat is used, and you know, almost typical of night bazaar environments, the walk is the big show. A little bit of chicken stock, yes? A little bit of chicken stock, yes. Yeah, right. Black pepper. Oh, that's beautiful. Generous amount of coarsely crushed black pepper. Note how uh, the chef works, raising the heat, lowering the heat, always working the wok carefully. That's it. That's so fast. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Amazing. So perhaps we can look at this dish and then also a little bit at the uh, ingredients that went in to make it. These are all the ingredients there. Right down in front here. So this special sauce here this is, special one. We mix is comprised of the sugar, yeah. the black dark soy sauce, sauce. Yeah. black soy sauce, black sauce. Salt, salt, crunch pepper, crunch black pepper yeah. and a little bit of stock. Little bit of salt. And then how do you thicken it? A little cornstarch? Uh, no, we fried it. So it's just reduced until reduce it's, it's it, yeah. so it's we almost like it. a jam consistency. Take a look at this up close. This is a real star. Fantastic. And then just like that, typical of Singaporean food, Black hot pepper. out of the wok, fresh for the best result. No fancy garnishes, no fuss, no muss. Just dig in and enjoy it. This is another great dish you might want to enjoy, enjoy if you're at the Pasar Malam. It's the fresh spring roll or popia. Now, the wrapper is already made and that's a complex uh, feat just in itself. But look what's going in here. I mean, we've got black soy sauce. What kind of Cali. chili paste is that? It's, uh, red chili paste. Just a straight, straight red one. chili paste, lettuce leaf. And the filling here, remarkably, is made with hikama. And what other flavorings go into that? Uh, we have a uh, black mushroom. We have mm -hmm. Julian carrots and oyster sauce inside. Wow, what yeah. a combination. A little bit of bean sprout? Yes. How many of these would you make in a night? 50 to 100. Wow, mm -hmm. so that's that a lot of work. Great. Now, crispy fried onion. Chinese sausage. This is cooked Chinese sausage. And I guess that's crushed peanut coming fresh up, right? Peanut, correct. Fresh crushed peanut. But wait, wait, isn't that a bowl of cereal over there? Uh, that is, what do you call it? The uh, rice crispy. The, the rice crispy. Yeah. So puffed rice actually is a famous Perfect, snack yeah. food all over Asia. So you see it in different varieties, but this is really a surprise for me. The shrimp. Here's the good part. The last three would be the shrimp, Fresh crab pepper. meat, and the, eggs. and the egg. So this is a, a, a huge, a huge one, yeah. this is the burrito of Southeast Asia, I guess is what we're getting to here. What an amazing combination. Now each each hawker would have a different style, different style with it. Yeah. So this is the, the coffee this garden, is Basar how, Malam style. How they, they wrap it. They have right. to wrap it tight and we are cut into four pieces, four to five pieces. Uh -huh. And then dress again with a little bit of the black soy sauce. This is a black sweet sauce, we call it. Okay, black this is the sweet one sweet now. One. All sweet right. One. So closer to the ketchup manis that we yeah, might have heard manis, about. Ketchup manis, you are right. Oh, ah, okay. Ketchup, ketchup manis. manis it is. Look at that roll. Yeah, Perfect. Slice yeah. it into four. Careful cutting. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And here comes some plates. I can just grab this right through there. Thank you. And here you are. Okay. There you are. That's the spring roll. Fantastic. Now it's loaded with sauce inside, so you really don't need anything else uh, alongside it. And you just sit with a nice cold beer, I would imagine, or something else cold to drink and chomp down on that. And the whole idea of a night bazaar is you move from stall to stall or booth to booth and put together a feast, either for yourself or for you and some friends, choosing only what you want to eat. 
and uh, what's fresh and what appeals. What a great way to choose a meal. Yeah. Fantastic. So there are, there are another way is that those who like it hot, you yes. can put more chili for them. Right. Those who like it hot, you can put Also, you can have it custom yeah. built. Yeah. Excellent. It gets better every time. Now have a look inside how it appears. You can see it's just loaded. It's chock-a-block with ingredients and they all look so fresh and delicious. We're going to go for the classic taste. Of course, it wouldn't be Entree to Asia without a little quality taste check here, carefully pulling this apart. Mm. Oh wow. Mm. What's really nice is the fresh garlic in this. Just gives it a wonderful little zing. But I can really taste the fried onions. Yeah. They balance everything out so nicely. This is just amazing. The wrapper is so light too. Thank you very much, yeah, Peter Lim. This has really been a great pleasure, thank sir. You. And thank you too. Much appreciated. Throughout Southeast Asia, fruit lovers gather to enjoy the season's splendor. Right now, here in Singapore, just about everything is available. Watermelons, longans, mangosteens, guavas, star fruit, love apples. But the king of fruit, unquestionably, is durian. And the best durian comes from Singapore. Chef Peter, yes. how are we going to handle this thing? It's sure. dangerous. I, I, let me show you how we're going to open the durian. Okay, fantastic. Okay. This is a very good durian. They are from Malaysia. So Malaysian durian Malaysian. really is yeah. the prided one. Okay. It's from, it's from Malaysia. And this is, they call it the T24 durian. It's one of the best great one. And that's a Malaysian yeah. sort of grading, T24? Grading, they have T24, they have two grades. The other grade is, they call it XO durian. That's the second grade. XO durian yeah, is that's the, the second, second grade. grade. It's the best grade. So fantastic. let me show you how we're going to open. Sure. First, you have the knife. So you have to look at the, the lining, you know. You have to follow the li lining, you see? Oh. This is how are you going to open? It's got like segments yeah, in the, in the pod. So, this is where you eat all the yellow meat. Amazing. Try one. Oh, right here, is this a good yeah, piece? Yeah. Fantastic. You have no idea what this is like. <laughs> This is fantastic. The thing about durian, what strikes a lot of people is its smell. A strong odor. Some people when they first try, they even hold their nose to give it a go, but this is not my first try. And I've been looking forward to this all year. Mmm. Mmm. It's like custard. It's like custard. It's the creamy texture. custard, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. When you eat it, it's very, you know, you get the, the textures and the smell. It's mm -hmm. good. Now this is actually quite sweet. Actually, it's Asian favorite. It's Asian favorite. And it's almost like caramel. You often hear that, you know, if you're in Hong Kong and you're at the airport, you're going to see big signs. Don't bring any durian into the airport. Don't yeah. bring it into the hotels. Right. Don't bring it into taxi cabs. That's why we, we allow our customers to eat it outside here, not exactly. inside the, the restaurant. Wow. But if you do get a chance, if you're in Singapore, and if it's the season, when is it the best time of the year? Uh, July is the best time. Here we are, part of July, and we're enjoying the best of the durian. If you get a chance, I don't think you'll ever forget this extremely memorable king of fruits. Fantastic. Right on. Hmm, how about that durian, eh? They call it the king of fruits. But honestly, what I love about hawker stalls and the night bazaar is the satay. The satay is so delicious. You'll see all different kinds. They make it with chicken, beef, and uh, with uh, lamb, that's very delicious. What I like though is seafood satay made with shrimp. Now when you prepare that, you want to think a little bit differently because seafood's expensive. You want to show it in its best light. Well, let's make a marinade for seafood satay. What I have here are some coriander roots. Now here's the, the coriander plant where it would take off and be all bushy, and we use the leaves all the time, but it's the roots that have an amazing flavor to them. And that flavor will stay in the marinade, permeate the food, and what's more, it's nothing that will burn once you're on the barbecue. So, I've just taken a coriander root, and when I say coriander root, here's a good example of what a coriander root looks like. It's not very big, but if it's a big one, don't worry about it. You need one. One is perfect. I'm going to throw that into the old mortar and pestle, or your mini food grinder if you have one, and I put in a scant half teaspoonful of coarse salt. The coarse salt really helps to break up the fibers of the coriander root and get all the flavors and juices going. The next ingredient is some chopped garlic. If you really like pounding, 
Well, don't worry so much about having it coarsely chopped. You can put in the whole clothes and relieve some stress. Okay, when you have that bound down to a nice paste, we're gonna throw in a little bit of sugar and some turmeric powder. If you find fresh turmeric root, all the better, but turmeric powder will work fine for this recipe. We mix that together. At this point, the marinade is dry. I'll scrape off what I can from the pestle, and I'm going to add a little splash of oil. Any kind of oil is fine, and in this case, actually, you could get away with olive oil. That would be a nice twist. Generally, I say stay away from olive oil when you're doing Asian cooking. I have some fish sauce here. Now, this has a wonderful taste and a wonderful aroma, and a teaspoon is all you'll need. The fish sauce is sort of a Southeast Asian way of adding saltiness and flavor. Think of it as kind of a Southeast Asian substitute for soy sauce. And now our marinade is ready. I happen to have some shrimp here. These are fairly large shrimp. You want this to look good on your barbecue, so go with a large shrimp. And you just pour the marinade on. You're done with your mortar and pestle at this point. And now all you have to do is toss the shrimp with the marinade. And from here, to be honest, you can let these marinate for up to 12 hours. This is a great do ahead the day before. And for that matter, although you lose some of the quality of the shrimp, it's a great idea to marinate them and pop them away frozen because they'll keep the flavor and they'll come out and they'll grill up. And if you serve them hot, they'll still be delicious. How do you get them onto the barbecue though? That's important. Take some bamboo skewers. Now these need to be soaked in water beforehand for a minimum of one hour because otherwise they'll burn. And then simply skewer the shrimp from the head towards the tail like this with the bamboo skewer. What happens here is the tail end is left on. It looks beautiful. It comes up lovely and red on a barbecue and then you quickly just bite or pull that off with your fingers and you're left to eat the shrimp meat that has been so wonderfully flavored by this traditional satay marinade. Of course, I already have some made up, and I want to take this opportunity to wipe the marinade off my hands. The turmeric will color your skin yellow a little bit. It doesn't last forever, and a little bit of lime or lemon juice will help take that color away when you wash your hands next. Well, it's not always barbecue season, and we're not always, we're not always in ideal conditions to barbecue either. So let's look at some alternatives. Lots of people can enjoy buying a little uh, tabletop griller. It's electric, you plug it in, you can grill on that. Something from Asia, however, is this Korean grilling stone. This is ingenious. You put it on top of a regular electric or gas element. In this case, I have a tabletop element. And it comes in two pieces, this cooker. There's a bottom part with a little ring around to hold water. This ring keeps flare-ups and spatters from making your stove dirty and causing fires. On top, there's a cooking surface. And you can get ones that are all metal and so on, some that have holes throughout. This one, however, has a lovely piece of ceramic, a nice composite of stone and whatnot. And that really gives a wonderful cooking surface. And I believe, not only a chic look, but a delicious flavor too. I'm going to oil it lightly. And a paper towel dipped in a bit of oil is the ideal tool for that. And simply place some satay skewers right on top of the cooking surface. Listen to that sizzle. So if you were doing other kinds of satay, let's say you were doing this with uh, chicken, this marinade would be great with chicken. This marinade would also be great with pork, however, since satay, we think of it as a Muslim dish, that would be a little bit out of character. You could uh, skewer up the chicken or the pork exactly the same way, and it would be just fantastic. We're going to let these cook, and while they're cooking, I think it's time to start looking at a sauce to serve with these, because even though they're delicious on their own, they're even better dipped into something, gives you something to do at the table. Day 20. 
Every year in Singapore, there is a food festival, and the world is invited to visit this city-state and sample its wares. Restaurants and hotels alike participate and show off their favorite food and recipes. Some venues, like here at the Shangri-La Hotel, recreate food themes, like the famous hawker stalls once seen everywhere on the streets of the island. These food carts were designed especially for patrons of the hotel and are far more ornate than the originals must have been. They do, however, harken back to a bygone era when Singaporeans strolled the streets in search of that extra special bowl of this or dish of that. Well, there's more than just a little bit of this and that here. Time for me to dive in. Well, these shrimp are cooking along beautifully. Now we're going to take a moment just to spin them over. The aroma tells me they're done. And in fact, I can't believe this. This looks so much like the satay you get right there in Singapore. Look at this, just the perfect little spots of dark brown, almost a little hint of burning, but that gives that aroma because don't forget, normally these are cooked over charcoal. Perfect, we're gonna let them cook on this side now. Let's prepare a delicious sauce to go along with the shrimp. I'm gonna turn the fire on underneath my small little clay pot here. Any small pot will do. Just use something that's not aluminum, that's important. And I'm gonna throw in some vinegar, just plain white vinegar, some sugar, and a fair amount of sugar. Oh, look at this, it's just like Asia. We've got a lump in the sugar. There we go. And now, diced carrot. And some similarly diced cucumber. Long English cucumber is what I'm using. You can use whatever's on hand about equal quantities of carrot and cucumber. We'll give that a stir. Now, some shallot onion. This has been diced a little bit more finely, just so it can give its flavor a little bit more aggressively to the dish. It's kind of hard with the satay skewer, with the shrimp on the skewer, to pick up the bits of cucumber and the bits of carrot, although they're nice and crunchy. But you're guaranteed to pick up a little bit of the finely minced shallot. And I tell you, that tastes almost as delicious as the chilies that I want to use here. I've chosen some pretty small, fiery chilies. If you don't like it hot, choose bigger chilies with a little bit more flesh to them. The bigger the chili you go, oddly enough, it seems that the better the flavor is and the less heat there is for you to experience. Now, in this case, I've gone small because, well, I like spice. It's also authentic. This becomes very quickly a wonderfully colorful, delicious sauce. What we'll do here is we'll wait for this to come to the boil. I'm going to wipe off my hands. Oh, there's my cloth right there. Wipe off my hands while this comes to the boil. We'll check on the shrimp and we'll make everything look delicious. Just move this out of the way here. And let's see. Got a little banana leaf dish here that's kind of reminiscent of how the hawkers often serve food on banana leaves. It's quite smashing. And here, some lettuce leaves, some fresh tomato, some cucumber, and even a little bit of coriander leaf to go along. What's fun is sometimes you take the lettuce leaf, skin off the shrimp or the piece of meat onto the lettuce leaf, that is take it off the skewer, dip it in the sauce and eat it like that, almost like a lettuce wrap. It tastes very nice. You can see how balanced so many Southeast Asian cuisines are, as I adjust my heat, always include fresh vegetables and fruits and so on, along with rich foods or grilled foods and so on, for the taste as well as for the fact it makes a meal. Oh yes, oh yes. The shrimp are looking wonderful, they're smelling great. We'll just rescue them from the grill here. And let's make them sort of arrange here very nicely. Oh, I can't wait to eat this. Turn off my tabletop cooker. The sauce is boiling. I like this sauce boiled fresh and then taken off the heat and served while it's still warm. Another option is to continue to cook it down carefully, but still boiling, and it becomes almost like a syrup. A lovely coating on the satay. However you like it, just boil it up. It's terrifically simple. And if it wasn't so hot and fresh, I'd be eating this on the camera right now. You 
You can learn a great deal about good cooking by watching the hawkers in Southeast Asia. One thing that I learned while watching them was that the hawkers who were most popular were the ones that added their own touches to traditional fare, like the cucumber relish alongside the shrimp satay. That's so much different and so much more delicious compared to the usual peanut sauce. Well, I'm looking forward to sharing with you more great ideas so you can add your own touch next time on Entree to Asia. I'm Thomas Robson. To find out more about Entree to Asia, including recipes and program descriptions, visit our website at www.entretoasia.com.